Then the homestead burned. That was Blanchard's home, and the Ambroses were living there. And uh, Victorine uh, Blanchard had married Edward Ambrose. David Ambrose. David Ambrose. David Ambrose. Edward David. Uh, and they had a daughter named the Dell. So here we go, the Dell. And they moved up, according to Dick Place, they moved up to the house that the Ottenbergs now live in on, on Holland Hill for a time. And then Martha, uh, by that time, James French had died, and he had left some money to the town to build a library. Uh, but they didn't have the right piece of property. Well, they had this very uh, fortuitous, perhaps, fire, right where he wanted to build a library. So uh, his widow said, well, what about this, I'll swap you my house, this Adele Taylor's house, for that burned out piece of land and we'll build a library here. So they said that sounded like a good plan. So this is the James E. French Library and uh, that plaque right there in the middle over the fireplace says in, in grateful appreciation of James E. French for all he did, just like the gallery. Um, so by this time, the, uh, the town is pretty much built the way probably Frances Stevens knew it when, when she was growing up here and, and many other people. Um, the, the little store that was over here to the right of the church, that burned just recently. I mean, that burned in my memory. 1994. 1994. The little red, you know, nice little red church. Mm -hmm. Apparently Paul Blanchard uh, had, had run an antique store out of that and, and then it was a storage place for the country store. So, you know, uh, there haven't really, haven't been many losses. Even that was a building down there, I think I'm right, this building, which was called Maplehurst and it was a guest house. I think that's still there. I think it's now been, you know, sort of boxed in, it's gone up a half a story and it's been sold forward. Selix, so, so. financial center. And of course that little one just next to the country store, that's still there. Um, so, you know, uh, most of the fabric uh, of the, of the uh, corner is still as it was. And, of course, by now, most of the farms are gone or going. And a lot of them were lost, some went to fire, some of them just because there was no use for them any longer. And those that survived just sat and waited for summer people or retirees to come along and, and uh, but there's one, I think, very interesting heritage of that period of 1840, 50, 60, when those buildings were being built in the corner. It's the Greek revival facade. We have it even here, and we have it here, and we have it here, and here, and even here. <laughs> So it, it, it's fascinating that those buildings, that uh, James French's building, this one, they, they've lost their usefulness in, in many ways now, but they have certainly uh, added to the heritage of this town. And the farms that I've taken pictures of and used in this, and it was easy to do, are all in general very, very good condition. And, um, we have we owe a great debt of gratitude to the people who care for these buildings. They're wonderful homes, but they tell so much about the development of our town. And uh, and we would be bereft without them. And I hope that someday we'll be able to say the same things for some of the buildings in in Mulberry Corner, which uh, many of which are. <coughs> Beautifully cared for. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it didn't look like that until quite recently. I, I think they, you know, hard winter. But uh, so anyway, this is uh, this is your corner, and this is your corner of the world. And um, I, uh, you've learned something. And now there's a little time, and I. If, I know there are a lot of people in this room who have old houses and are interested in them. And if you have stories about your houses, uh, I think this is going to be a wonderful time to tell them. So I'll turn the one to
picture back around the slide of the homestead a little bit after that of a house that's on Wenaki Road, but you didn't say anything about it. Uh, it was part now part of the cross yeah, development. It was just a you know I went around town with my camera and I took pictures of every building that I thought was beautiful. So there's nothing special about that. Um, well, it was special in the sense that it for a long time was the headquarters for a camp um, plum what field plum field. field. So again, I mean, it's an indication that you have a really fine structure, really well built, can't be a farm any longer because there's no land. And so what do you use it for? You make it into a camp or you make it into something else. And, you know, and I think that's how the buildings are, are saved. And that's how, you know, buildings everywhere are saved, adaptive reuse or whatever. It's now just a private home, I understand. Part of Crossman's. Part of Crossman's. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It was on the library house tour just a few years ago. Did you take a picture of the house on top of Aldridge Hill? On top of what? Aldridge Hill. Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> Aldridge Hill. <laughs> what was it called? Aldridge Hill. As long as I can remember. Where was it? Back up the street from the house at Plumpy. Go back up the road and walk the top of Oh, yes, yes. I, I know that so house. It's, it's in the book. It's all old. Yeah, it's in the book, but I, I, I didn't take a picture of it. Because, well, you know, at some time, I would like to take a picture of every house that's there and, you know, put in the address and say roughly what it is, but I don't have that time now. <laughs> no, no, because I know you were down there. I didn't know that was Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. It has another name in my book. I, I well, I'm sure it does, but I mean, yeah. uh, it was all known as Paul Michelle. Okay. Old Victor Alders was a bit of a, he was a he summoned it for many years. Uh-huh. Okay. Anybody have a story about their own house, though? Okay. Yeah. I don't have a story, but I have a question. Uh, yeah. I had the uh, house on uh, Lakeshore Drive, 102 Lakeshore Drive. And uh, surprisingly enough, there's a, another house within a mile of that house that looks exactly the same. The porch filials were all the same. The windows are placed the same. The exterior woodwork is all the same. I think it's been that house has been split into a, uh, apartments or something. I think it's got a double front door. But I'm trying to figure out how those two big houses got so close to one another without being kits or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't. I, you know, I don't think that's particularly unusually. Uh, very often going through here, I, I, I'd find that there were like two, right there at Multiverno Falls, for instance, the two houses very close together. And they had, looks like father and son were living in them. And they were both carpenters. And there's a lot of similarity in the houses that are up, say, Sheridan Road, which is not too far away from there. And I thought, well, you know, these guys, they get a pattern or they get a style they like and they'll, they'll build it. Somebody says, oh, I, I want that house. Can you build one for me? But just change the door a little bit for something like that. So I, I just would have assumed, to me, I'm, I'm always struck by how similar these houses look anyway. All those houses built between 1790 and 1820. They look so similar. It's almost like, well, of course, we do now. I mean, you build yes. a colonial, they all look alike. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but yours, of course, your house is very, very different. It's individual. It's got lots of bay windows. Oh, it's got the same bay windows. Same bay windows, yeah. Yeah, it's got the same. The only thing that's different is the the, uh, the uh, barn and the building between the house and the barn are attached to it. And, of course, they're different sizes. Well, they could have been built at a different time, too. Could have. But I think you once said you thought it was a Sears World Bump kit, but, but then later I thought you said you didn't think so. Yeah, well, I just said... Uh, I found the uh, almost exact uh, uh, back plates for the uh, uh, doorknobs mm -hmm. uh, in an old reprinted Sears catalog. Oh. Almost exactly the same thing. Well, hard to uh, I just, that just kind of got me. I, I, my grandparents had a Sears house. Sears houses were very popular for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, bungalows, you drive around town, I, I Talk about Ambrose's. I think I heard that uh, Bud Ambrose, Adele's brother, right? Um, he, he started out his business selling bungalows around town. And you go around town, you go up uh, 
old 109 and there's one sort of across the street from Cheryl Mays. And you go down 109 and there's another one that looks very, very similar. They, they're sort of dotted around town, have this wonderful bungalow look, and they were kids. You well, know, you could order them, maybe there'd be a little different. You probably have a book you say, like Plan A and you know, Plan B. And then they'd come and he'd assemble them. And, uh, so, yeah. And, and your house would be the same, roughly the same era. So, it could be. I found it. It had an old uh, uh, soapstone sink in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was working on an old drain under that old sink one day. And uh, I noticed that there was a date scratched in the bottom. And it was uh, obviously a month, a day, and a year. The year was 95. And uh, that was, I think, in 93 or 94. And I, you, I didn't put it there. Nobody, nobody put it there. <laughs> so you're thinking maybe 1895? I was built about 1895, so we scratched that date in the bottom of the source notes. But don't forget, a lot of these people, when they had an old house and it was kind of plain and they were getting tired of it, they would dress it off. Just like, uh, you know, that. Uh, Del Taylor's house, you've got those Italian eight brackets holding the roof. I mean, it was a Greek revival house, and then you sort of make it a little bit yeah. jazzier. And uh, people put in, there's houses on, uh, there's a house on 109 where the Carrascos had their little farm stand. Uh, if, you, if you strip away those gables and things like that, you see the clean lines of the old cave. You know, that was probably built there in, in 1805. Uh, but by 1870, boy, is that getting tiresome. So, you know, you put these little things on it to make it more interesting. And, and it, it sometimes hard to see through that to see what it is. Like the wedding cake house in uh, Kennebunk. But, um, yes. So on that plot of the subdivision, uh, one, did they sell all of, or were all of those pieces of property ultimately purchased? Because you had a lot of them that were not showing any. Yeah. Two, those were tiny little, I assume, maybe even an acre or even less. I'm not sure. No, I thought they were 200 acre. Each houses. of those little plots was yeah. the whole town. That's the whole town. I mean, that's the, the, whole, the whole town. Is that the same as the Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it was, you know, that's the other thing. It's a fascinating the thing. The body of water there was yeah, range. That that's what it was talking about. I know, but isn't that the piece up to the current town of the dock? Well, can you go back to that chart? Um, well, they didn't. They didn't sell it out, obviously, and and that was one of the problems because uh, they, they then they actually went back and asked for more because uh, they couldn't they couldn't sell that land. They, this land up here is obviously in the Ossipi, and right. nobody wanted that. You know, you could, except right in here, this is the, the, the lease settlement up there where the Castle on the Clouds is kind of flat land. So that actually did sell, but it actually sold a little later. It took them a while. And, uh, and then you've got, this is Red Hill. And you had a few. You've got Horns and Cooks and a few other people who, this is Red Hill Road probably. This is probably Kansaka. Uh, well, so what's the body of water poking up into the middle of that right there? This is Lee's Mills. That, that's what I thought. I mean, Green's like, Basin. No, no. Yeah. And then, you know, Montmore Bay. So when I think about Lee's Mill and that piece of water there, it, it's hard to imagine each of those plots are 200 acres. I mean, that's not a very wide body of water. Mm -hmm. So something's, this, there's a disconnect in my head. I mean, I well, some of these pieces are little tags. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether the scale's all screwed up or something. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. Huh? I don't know. 